everyone, welcome in Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah with a book look. Yes, today is time for a look through a book, a craft or yarn or something like that adjacent. And uh, today I wanted to show you something that some people may not be that familiar with. This is plastic canvas. It's got holes like you would do a needlepoint. It's bendy uh, and you can cut it and you can join it and do all kinds of neat things. The book that I have to show you today is pretty vintage. Um, right here, Needlepoint on Plastic Canvas, published by Charles Scribner's and Sons in New York, written by Elizabeth Brenner Denito. Denito, Denito. I'm gonna take off the jacket. That makes flipping through it much easier. This is still in fantastic condition, and when I tell you how old it was, you'll be surprised. Uh, this was originally $12.95 when it was purchased, but I purchased, originally, I purchased it from a used bookstore that I may not even be there anymore. But yeah, that's a nice looking binder on the book there. Okay, flipping through, this was originally published in 1978. So it's been around a minute. You might think, oh my gosh, something from the 70s, how is that relevant today? Let me tell you, you can take inspiration from a pattern that maybe, you know, oh gosh, those colors, you know, or whatever. For one thing, fashion wise, everything comes back. Um, for another thing, you can take inspiration off of it and just kind of make it yours. And that's what's fun. Now in this book, most of it is just paper. There's no color. There is a section of color pictures to show you some of the projects. Uh, materials and supplies. And this goes through, it presumes that you know nothing. And it tells you about plastic canvas. Okay, about transferring the design to canvas if you want to do that and not do it as a counted thing so that you can actually see what you're doing. Um, embroidery hints and things like that. So yes, and it tells you how to trim it and what to do with it. There's somebody doing some very specific things up there and some scissors going on. And then it goes into the patterns. Home accessories. You can make a welcome picture. Now that's cute. Imagine that in your colors or, you know, with a friend and, you know, you could do some cute, silly things with that. And it tells you what to use. Okay. Um, it tells you about the yarn and it tells you what to make with it. A tree wall hanging. Now I've seen a lot of people do that tree of life thing. And once you kind of get the hang of basically embroidering on plastic canvas, you can do anything you want. You can take an inspiration of this and move along with it. See, they even give you the, the, the main drawing for it that they used. Picture frames. This is actually, or was, a very popular thing. Look at that. And if you also do embroidery, imagine doing regular embroidery inside there. I have a hard time with embroidery because it's small, it's tiny. I do some cross stitch, or I did. I haven't done it in a long time because my eyes get so tired from doing it, but this is not bad. You can feel where you have to put your stuff. Oh, I like this frame style with the way they did the stitches here. Very cute. That's called the Gobelin stitch or something. Oh, you can have a graph. Graphs are handy. There are a couple other ones as well. This is a mirror frame. Let's see if they give you a picture of that. Nope, there's no actual picture of this one, just the graph telling you you're going to put a little mirror in there and then you can do all that decor around the outside. This is something that is was very popular. This one, everybody had tissue box covers done in plastic canvas, okay? They tell you how to do it. And I've seen some cute, cute, clever ones with characters and different things on them. They don't have to just be the basic thing. Placemats are also pretty popular. Uh, this is the butterfly placemat. They give you the how to cut it out and how to do the stitches in there. And there are different meshes of plastic canvas too. They're doing this one in a 10 mesh. And I don't remember what the one I have is. It's not as easy to find plastic canvas supplies anymore. It, it just stopped being as popular. And it's a shame because this is someone, that, it, it can be someone's gateway into crafting, you know. Maybe they don't feel confident enough to just create something with a hook and some thread or some yarn. But hey, they're starting with a form. They can go somewhere with it. Here are some shapes. I got these. Oh my gosh. I got these at a Goodwill in 2016. Okay. And I got them on a half price sale. So this was a quarter. For a, This was an unopened thing of 10 star, star shapes. 
This one I got on clearance at Walmart for 50 cents. Parts. Okay. So even with the kids, because the, the needles you use, they're blunt plastic. You can teach a fairly youngish child who's not going to, you know, poke that in their eye how to go about one of these and make them accomplish something and make something. Uh, butterfly napkin ring, that's kind of cool to go with your placemats there. And coasters. Coasters have always been popular on plastic canvas because you, you decide what kind of yarn you want to use, but they keep their shape. And you can wash them gently. I would wash them by hand and not put them in the dryer because uh, it's plastic, but they will dry. They're not that huge. But this tells you, you know, it cuts it out in some kind of a weird flower shape. I always did just squares or just round, you know. A rug. Now, I've never thought about doing a rug out of plastic canvas. But hey, this was the 70s. I don't even think my grandmother did a rug in plastic canvas, and she did all kinds of things. Uh, another one that's a geometric rug. Desk accessories. Now, these can be fun. <laughs> When I show you this and tell you this, you're going to know why I'm laughing, okay? It is a typewriter cover. A typewriter cover. <laughs> wow, and I remember these. <laughs> I had a manual typewriter because I'm old. Yep. Oh my goodness, that's hilarious. Wow. And the graphs and everything with, what to, with how to do that. They also tell you about how to do the... Uh, the little boxes that, that go next to it. You can put a little air plant or something in there. and You know, you can get clever and creative with it. A typewriter cover. A desk pad. Now these are nice. You can still use these to hold those big calendars that you can buy. And lay on your desk. Kind of do it with your own theme. Oh, and here are some of the pictures of some of the things they did. They've also got one for a stamp box. Um... <clears throat> Oh, there we go. There are those frames from earlier in the mirror frame, tissue box cover, some coasters. There's that butterfly placemat that looks kind of psychedelic. Somebody was trying to relive the 60s. Yeah, the rug. I'm not so sure about that rug. I mean, come on. There's another rug. I'm not sure what that is. It's a belt. No. We're leaving that one back in the 70s where it came from. We haven't gotten to some of these yet later in the book. And we probably don't need to because they're showing us pictures here. A clutch bag. You used to be able to buy kits where they've already got the bag part cut out. You just do what you want with it. Because it, it, piecing the bags together is it, kind of tricky. Um, but yeah, also the glasses case because you line it with some nice soft stuff. And a key holder. A sewing box, a scissors case, a pin cushion, and a trinket box down here. And a carrying bag. Well, that's generic. It's a tote bag. A wall organizer. And these are little pockets that kind of poof out where you can put stuff in them. That's kind of cute. This one is potted flowers. Where are the flowers? are ones that I can't kill. They're plastic canvas. The Lizzie doll. That looks more frightening than doll-like to me, but I've seen too many horror movies. The photo album cover. Now you could do something like that and have it covering your, your book full of patterns that you have. You know, that's kind of cool. The straw basket. That's cute. Alphabet letters. You can do what you want with your letters and put them on the wall. Those are kind of neat. Let's see if there's anything else. And the rest of this, of course, it has the graphs. It has the directions on how to do it. Gifts to give or keep. That's the, the potted flowers. That's weird. That, to me, that's weird. Yeah, that doll is creepy to me. The album cover, photo album cover is really cool. Oh, and you got the graphs for all the letters there telling you how to cut them out and how to do that. That's really neat. A glossary of stitches and finishing techniques. Because there are a lot of different stitches that you can do to give different effects. Matter of fact, I'm going to pause this for a second. I have a really 
old plastic canvas project that I did that I still use that I need to replace because it's breaking. Okay, in order to keep all of my tablets and stuff managed, I have to keep them in a container. This is a plastic content, plastic canvas box that I made. And these little corners are actually like, I've got so much in there now that it kind of puffs them out, but they're supposed to sit like, like this you know, little pumped out corners. When I was making this, we were watching the reboot of Battlestar Galactica and all of their papers had like the corners cut off and I was just fascinated by that shape. So that's how I did it. And that is of course becoming the failing point of this. All the places where it's put together are starting to break because I just grab it and snatch it up and it's heavy. But you see that? That was just a fun yarn that I did this in long before I crocheted and I need to make something else that will hold all of these and do it again. And I will probably make it out of plastic canvas because I like the fact that it is box shaped. You can set it down, it's not gonna go you know, or something like that. So yes, I think plastic canvas has a place in the yarning world. Um, even Crystal back a day, she loves plastic canvas and used to do a bunch of it. Um, you can use it for a lot of things. You can use plastic canvas to help stiffen up a tote bag. Um, I've seen a lot of people do that, but you know, you can do decorative and fun things with it too. But yeah, this has been around uh, almost as long as I've been in this house. And I've been in this house almost 16 years, 17 years. And this gets used because every time I go to the doctors, I have to bring all of my meds with me. This is what I grab. So, and this was a variegated yarn. I did not choose a pattern. It just kind of went as it went. No, I don't remember what it was. But yes, I still like those colors a lot. I wish I remembered what it was because I'd want to crochet something out of it now. But there you go. Um, like I said, I picked this up at a used bookstore. This is the jacket for it. It was still in great shape. And yeah, plastic canvas. Is it crochet? No. Is it fun? Yeah, it is. Does it use yarn? It very well can. Eh, don't poo-poo it unless you tried it, okay? Thank you for joining me for a book look. Um, I do a book look every Sunday and I do all kinds of other things throughout the week. You may have seen them pop up uh, throughout the video. Um, I hope to see you soon. Please leave me a comment below. Have you ever done plastic canvas? Do you have any of those old plastic canvas projects still sitting around the house? Because I don't get rid of anything. I have all the things, you know, <laughs> that I ever did. So I have some of those around. Um, I'd love to see what you've done. That would be kind of fun. So uh, please see the description down below for anything that you may have missed. And I hope to see you around here really, really soon. Bye, y'all.